I was seeing somebody, though. Was it a yak? No, it was Bigfoot. Last time I saw him, he was leaving, and I was like, hey, where are you going? And he was like, I'm just gonna go hang out with my friends. To understand the meals of our present, we must first understand the meals of our past. That's why we're recreating some of the most notable meals throughout history, and today, Emily, we reach our highest peak yet. You mean kissing Alexander Skarsgård? Now that sounds pretty hot, though. We are recreating the first meal from the first descent of Everest, the first time we first kissed Alexander Skarsgård. It's time for... Meals of History! All right, Emily, so the first ascent of Everest was in 1953 by the Nepali Sherpa Tenzing Norgay and Sir Edmund Hillary, who was representing the British interests in the Joint Himalayan Committee. There was a whole big political thing about it. And this is the menu from the first successful climb. So right here we see a typical day, and you see oatmeal biscuits, bacon, butter, jam, marmalade, cheese, chocolate, and other sweets. And we got all those in here. So check it out, right? This is all super high calorie foods meant to sustain climbers. So basically all you got is just like some protein from the bacon, then a ton of carbs from all these cookies, the jams, the butters, and these are all foods that are familiar to British people, and there's an interesting reason behind that. All of the food going up Everest on the successful ascent, they were called field rations or composite rations that were essentially meant for British military. They figured like, if they're meant for people out in the field for a long time, why not climbers? And all of the calories, all of the nutrients and vitamins were broken down by scientists to get the right fuel they needed to climb this freaking mountain. This is like the first MRE. This is like pretty much, thing. yeah. This is literally, they were just taking MREs up. They're here, grab like an, oh, this is an oatmeal Honestly, biscuit. Honestly, I'm kind of embarrassed to say I don't climb mountains, but this is my diet. <laughs> <laughs> you have the fuel. You don't even know you go do the it. The fuel for writing GMS. <laughs> Ooh. What not to love? You got a cookie, you got some marmalade, mm. but, you want some chocolate? Sure. I don't want to eat this as a show. I just, there's chocolate in front of me. I want to oh, eat it. Oh yeah, that's really good chocolate. That's not, where'd you get Oh from? wow. Whole Foods? The Whole Foods on Everest. But what I find infinitely more fascinating than the food they actually took up Everest was the food they were supposed to take up Everest, and then they found out that it didn't quite work. So what we got right here, Ooh! Piss off! Yeah, get out of here! So this is the menu from the expedition to Cho Oyu in 1952, one year before. Cho Oyu is the sixth highest mountain in the world, and this was designed to like test everything out. This is the dress rehearsal for the wedding, and this is the food that they took. This is like a hybrid menu of a bunch of like Nepali foods along with a lot of these British ration style things. So you see for breakfast, the British, they got the bacon and the tea biscuits and all that. But then you see here, we got like Sampa, which is a roasted barley flour sort of dough or porridge that they would bring up with them, very popular with the Sherpa, and everybody starts their day in Nepal with that for breakfast with the yak butter tea. So for me, I'm really fascinated in this because I think the Sherpa from Nepal and Tibet, they kind of get like lost in history, even though they were the much more important people climbing up the mountains because they actually knew the terrain. So when the Joint Himalayan Committee went up to Cho Oyu in 1952, it was considered like a huge disaster because they screwed up their oxygen levels and also they changed the entire menu because apparently some of the foods just didn't agree with the British climbers because they weren't used to eating like lentils and chapati and things like that. But I think oh, this yeah. is really fascinating. So I want to make some of the food from this this meant. I think it's gonna be really cool. Emily, are you ready for this? Yeah, I have no idea what any of those things are, but I'm very excited to learn. All right, cool. I'm gonna start prepping that out. You wanna go get in costume? Sure. Do you think I should do something that's human this time? Yeah, probably like a, like a climber or something like that. I do what I want, Josh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God! You're not a mountain climber at all! Well, it depends on who you ask. I suppose so. Stupid question. What? Why? Where whom? All right, so it's the first time you guys are seeing me on a camera. I'm a Yeti. Oh, stupid me. Hey, <laughs> um, I'm really interested in becoming a human and being like amongst the human society. I feel that. Um, I got a lot to learn. I think maybe saying hello was. Yeah, you, you came in screaming more than most people would, but I respect the energy. In your culture, is that like a sign of respect or? It's just the noise I've always made. Yeah. It does scare a lot of climbers though. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Do you, do you climb yourself? Yeah. Yeah, well, I live up there. So. Yeah, so. Also, most Yetis like live in the mountain. Like inside, like you burrow yeah, deep in. Yeah, we're in there. That's why you don't see us a lot. That's fantastic. This is maybe a stupid question. How, how much do you know about the traditional breakfast of the Sherpa people, the ethnic group within the Tibetan Himalayan mountain range? You know, I don't know a lot about what they ate, but I do know what scares them. <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine that's you. Yeah, usually yeah. Uh, it's more of like a, hi, I want to hang out. And then they like fall to their death. Yeah, gosh, that's, I guess a lot of it. What, Everest has killed about 300 climbers? Yeah, I'd say I take responsibility for about 80. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah it wasn't it's your not fault, good, though. But, you know. No. Well, hey, uh, speaking of Everest, do you want to make tea? You want to make sampa? It's the traditional breakfast. Maybe this can kind of bridge the gap between you and the human people. I would like that very much if it would make people like me more. Yeah, God, like, no guarantees, because boy, is this frightening. Also, it 
kind of looks like you just got the herps around your mouth. Oh, I haven't cleaned my face. Do you have the herps? No, I had a little dinner. Like 70% of people have the, Before. oh, that's blood. Whether it's herpes or blood, I do not judge you, my new Yeti friend. Do you have a name? Oh, um. Yeah. <laughs> I did Very good. good pronunciation. Thank you so much. And then back of the throat. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thank you, okay, beautiful. What we're gonna make right now, uh, this is called Sampa. We are taking roasted barley flour, we're gonna mix that with a little bit of yak ghee. This is clarified yak butter. Do you eat yak? No, yaks are like kind of in the oh. family of my people, like. Well, it's just the butter. It's just, you know, I just, do All you right. produce milk? Can I milk you? I don't know, Greg. Could you milk me? Let's start making this tea. So Sampa, this is made with roasted barley flour. It is made with yak ghee. It is made with yak milk, except this is just normal milk because we couldn't find the yak milk. And then pu'er tea. So pu'er tea, it is a tea that is commonly drank uh, in Tibet by the Sherpa people. And also you'll find it at the occasional Starbucks in America. Starbucks. Yeah, you've heard of Starbucks? I've heard people talk about it a lot. Can you they seem that? very obsessed with it in an unhealthy way. I believe that's true. So right now we are making a pu'er tea Concentrate, we're gonna take four of these discs and we're gonna flake them off by hand. You see, they take the tea and they roast it and they pack it in these little uh, discs right here. Just Why do you drink that tea? Off by hand. Well, you drink tea to kind of wake you up and it's like a really important sort of like ritual for people and this was a big thing, right? In the morning, almost everybody wakes up and they eat Sampa and drink it with salty tea. No, God, did you eat that? Oh God, I missed that, no, no, mm, ah, please God, don't, it's, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're both drinking it, you know, it's gonna boil it off. I don't, maybe we'll be imbued with the Yeti spirit. That was good. I no, feel awake. Didn't. That's good, <laughs> that's good. Give that a smell though. It's really interesting, it's a really pungent tea. Ooh, right yeah. Right now we're making a concentrate. So what you would do is you typically hot. make, it's, it's real hot. You'd make a concentrate of this and then you'd actually thin it out with water, milk, yak butter, and then we're gonna make a sort of dumpling out of that. So right now, all we gotta do, flake this off, get this concentrate going, and then we're gonna shut that down. Let that brew for a little bit, let it steep, and then we'll come back and we'll make our breakfast. Okay, that sounds good. So you have any like tips for how to land the, the dudes? You on Tinder? No, what's that? It's a dating app for morally dubious people. Oh, it's an app? Yeah. I will tell you this, lots of Wi-Fi problems on Everest. <laughs> that makes sense, okay. I was seeing somebody though. Was it a yak? No, it was Bigfoot. Oh. oh. Last time I saw him, he was leaving, and I was like, hey, where are you going? And he was like, I'm just gonna go hang out with my friends. Have He's you had gone. a relationship with a human person? Is this the closest you've really been to a human? Honestly, yes, you're doing a great job. Oh, yeah, that's Thank you so much, I think you're doing a great job. You Thanks. seem normal-ish for a Yeti. I don't know what my preconceived notions were. Oh, I appreciate were. that. I almost got very close to having a friendship with this guy who, uh, he scaled Everest in eight hours. It was like, it's not on record though, but I saw it, he did Holy it. Holy crap, do you follow him up there? You're just like, hey, do you think maybe he was running from you up Everest? He described people like coming after him with their arms like this, and really I was like, hey, give me. <laughs> Give me a hug, buddy. That makes sense. You're doing great. They just want to be loved. They just want to be loved. so fast. Uh, you've killed a lot of people, I will say that. Uh, by accident. By accident, by accident. For the record, by accident. Oh, I yeah, do for... not eat people who are alive. I eat dead people that are already dead. Well, now dead. you get to eat roasted barley flour and tea. Does that excite you? You can maybe go like vegan or something. I've met some vegan people. I can hear them off in yeah. the distance. It's all they talk about. Chat, chat, chat. All right, so we've added water to the concentrate to thin it out. And now we're gonna take our milk and we're gonna add that to Ooh. it. And then we're gonna take a nice hefty scoop of this yak butter. You're gonna put butter in the... In that? Yeah, so this is actually really popular. Yak butter tea is actually what inspired Bulletproof Coffee, where if you hear someone talking about the keto diet, this is a good dating tip. If you hear mm. someone talking about keto, just run. But don't you think that like, the climbers of Everest are like kind of the keto people of like athletes? <laughs> they kind of are, yeah. I don't know if I trust anybody who really wants to climb a mountain. Yeah. I don't know why you guys do it. All right, so now we have the yak butter, we have the milk and the tea. And we're gonna add this little pinch of salt. So this is like not a sweet tea, this is actually a savory tea. It's almost kind of brothy. If you smell it, it smells really aromatic, really savory. And now we have some of that sampa, which is that roasted barley flour in there. We're gonna add a little bit of butter. We're gonna start kneading that together. Get your hands dirty, start, start kneading that together. We're trying to form almost like a solid dumpling. Don't eat, no, that's not snow. Don't eat that. I like it. You like it. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna take some tea. We're gonna add that here, and then we're gonna start mixing it up and kneading it into a dough ball. I think I got some of your barley <laughs> BS to my eyeball. Sorry. That was my bad. All right, so now I'm gonna try and aerate this tea a little bit. I'm just gonna dip a bowl in and start sort of passing this back and forth. I'm gonna burn the hell out of myself, and that's fine. Yep. Ow, ow, holy crap. Oh no, Ow, that hurts no. so what badly. Are you doing? I don't know what to tell you. You gotta mix the tea. Snow. You gotta mix the tea. Ow, put some snow on it, Yeti. Save me, Yeti. Put it down, put it down, my God, it hurts. No, I gotta aerate it. Please don't. 
don't die. This would be like it'll be on camera, and then it's, it'll, like, people really have a bad opinion about. It. Are there people trying to like poach you? Like, do you have hunters coming after you? I've never really thought about it. Oh God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put that in your mind. Are there single hunters? What? All right, hold on. This is how this is coming together. Add it's not. More. It's oh, I'm going. I'm going. I'm adding more. I'm adding more tea. Thank you. Ooh. Hold on. Stir this around a little bit. Ow. Half of human existence is dealing with pain. I can understand The pain that. of lost loved ones. I'm immortal, so I don't really lose people I love. So can you tell me, 1953, that's yeah. when Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary actually made the famous ascent up Everest. Yeah. Were they really the first? I feel like there was probably a random dude in like 864 who was just like, Well, they were the back. first to not die. Well, okay, that makes sense. There's a few people that we would see occasionally, I think in like the 30s. I don't know if you know this, but you guys can't breathe like yeah. up high, like at all. Well, <clears throat> Ooh, you put a little stank on that little one, huh? on that one. <laughs> nice. We got this on, but we got a little delicious dough ball inside that salted yak butter tea. This is our breakfast, but hmm. we got lunch to make, and I want to eat the whole thing together on How the mountain. How many times do humans eat? Oh, well, the climbers would actually have to eat a ton of times a day in really calorie dense foods, uh, but typically three is a good number. How many times do you eat? Usually once a century. Oh. I've had a very big meal recently, as you can tell. Would you mind indulging with me? I don't care. I live forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're getting really good at it. I feel like this probably looks familiar to you, raw flesh. Yes! You're probably used to eating like uh, the steakum variety of it, like the freezer aisle stuff. Yeah, pretty much, that's why I have these teeth. I just gnaw on a chunk of ice meat. Those look, those look really convincing, by the way, those are nice. Thank you, my dentist says I'm doing a good job with them. <laughs> you don't got Wi-Fi, but you got dentists. All right, so what we got here, we have some lean beef. We are about to make pemmican. So pemmican is also one of the things that didn't make it up Everest, but a lot of explorers and adventurers used to take it with them. It is an incredible protein and fat rich snack that actually originates from American Indians. Uh, the Cree tribe actually came up with the word. You would sun dry or smoke beef and then combine it with like berries and honey and fat. Ooh. And then you would just sort of take it with you on a hunt. Very cool. All right, so I'm gonna slice this in little strips and we're gonna get them dehydrator and then we're gonna mix it with some fresh berries and other things. But this is the thing also that didn't make it up Everest, but was on the original trip, which I find interesting. Well, the original trip, that's what they say. There's other people who tried. It, that's true, that's it true. They didn't make true. it to the top. Did you create any like fun bonds with those people? There's this guy who snowboarded. I would watch a made for Netflix movie about a snowboarding Yeti. I want you to know that. I think you have a career You think in I should do it? I think you should do it. Get you in a pitch room. You're a uh, friendly person. I Ish. Ish. He was there in like, I don't know, the year of your lord, 2001. Who's your lord? He's in the middle of the mountain. He's got like a mountain god that you... His name's Carl. <laughs> A big change in etymology. To Carl? Carl? Yeah, well, Carl is from your... Why do you worship him? How did he convince you of that? I don't know, he just told us really cool stories <laughs> about you guys. Like, he did tell us about the internet. That was something he told us yeah, about. Yeah, 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 uh, But he can't get you on Tinder. No, I'm not allowed to have a phone yet. I'm only 200 years old. Apparently, I gotta wait a while. So we got the beef sliced up. We're gonna pop this in the dehydrator. Uh, we're gonna let that go. And then... Uh, That's my name. Go. Don't wear it out. <laughs> I should give you a name. Yeah, what, well, what was my You're Yeti? You're a Yeti. Bleep. Is that good? Bleep. No, bleep. Bleep. There you go, the tongue. You bleep. Go. There you go. I gave you a Yeti name, why don't you give me a human nickname? You look like a Tina. Okay. Tina. 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 Tina the Yeti. That sounds good. <laughs> I'm gonna take out the beef. This is incredible. We have dehydrated this for 12 Whoa. hours. To the point where it's, it's like completely desiccated. Again, we use a really lean beef, but then we're gonna reintroduce fat into there. So it's almost just crumbling. You wanna try that? Yes. I got a beef chip. It's hard to use the fake teeth on top of my fake teeth. <laughs> I can see your real teeth peeking out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Oh, it's like beef bacon. Yeah, it really is. Well, wait, is, no, that's be bacon's pork. <laughs> She's so good on a cooking show, folks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good job, Tina. All right, so we're gonna add all this beef to the food processor, and we're gonna blend it up. Obviously, they wouldn't have had food processors up there. Obviously, the Cree Indians did not have food processors. Uh, they would've just kind of like bashed it up. <laughs> oh no, oh God, Tina's dying. Immortal, immortality, let's test you out. I tried to woof it down and it was too big. <laughs> What are you all? Look at us! All right, so we're just gonna keep lining that up. This kind of feels like the warning signs of an avalanche. Has that happened to you before? Yes. 
I almost didn't make it. But yeah, that's like the number one reason why people don't get up the, to the top. I thought it would have just been like lack of oxygen or hypothermia. I mean, that's a pretty obvious one too, but Hunts. people are really, I mean, the avalanches, y'all gotta learn to like listen. What's the weirdest way someone's died? Well, I wanna tell you a little bit about the snowboard guy. So we you made that, it all I'm the way add down. Some fat in here. He was amazing. He made it all the way down, then he came back, he came back, and I thought he was coming back to hang out with me. So this is beef tallow right here. We're just, you thought the snowboard guy was gonna hang out with you? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was like waving at him. I watched him go all the way down. I was really the only witness to seeing that he actually did. He went alone though. Yeah. Is that common for people to go alone? Sometimes. Yeah. I really just don't know why you even want to be up there. I mean, I'm grateful. I like the company, but like, why are you doing this? Look, yourself? I'm one of those people that I watched Free Solo. You should check that one out. I watched Free Solo, and the whole time I was like, stop it. No one's making you do this. Here are the things that you don't have to go to ever. blends the meet up with the for fat me to again. tell you what's up. There we go. So there's snow. That's it. What about, I mean, like the face of God, like the, the reverent majesty of nature. I mean, you're welcome to come hang out with Carl, but like, uh, he's kind of busy sitting on the I do, I feel like there's a really dark story behind Carl that you don't know, but like to my people, it'd be I'd like I'd rather really not up. know, I'm having a good like, time. Like, did he hang out a lot in like uh, Southern California in the 70s, listen to a lot of weird music? I don't know where he came from. Where was he when Sharon Tate was murdered? I don't know who that is. Was she a, a climber as well? She was a bit, uh, somewhat of a social climber, one could say, but no, not Ooh, a. Ooh, I want to do that. I here, I have a, a tip for you actually. You should give this to people that you see coming up the mountain. This would be a great way to network. We call it networking. You gotta get on LinkedIn. You gotta solve your Wi-Fi issues first. What is this? Is it food? Yeah, so it's called a Kendall Mint Bar. So this is actually something now you gotta take the, oh, there's a wrapper on it. There's a wrapper on it. Yeah, we, we like to put things in little packages. This is called Kendall Mint Cake. It's actually something that climbers uh, from England, I mean, dating back to like the 30s would take on climbs because really it's calorie dense. All it is Ooh. is like sugar, artificial mint flavoring and nothing else packed into a bar but it's become such a tradition that climbers today will still take Kendall mint cake up there. It was wild. It doesn't feel cold, but it tastes cold. Right? Ow. It's like the inside of a York peppermint patty has just been like crushed to death and then like coagulated and mixed with a little bit of soap. Witchcraft. <laughs> like coral crap, right. We got a parchment paper. We're just gonna pack our pemmican in here and then we're just gonna freeze in the snow mm -hmm. and we're gonna take it with us and we're gonna eat it on our little picnic. Well, we're gonna go back to the snow. You gonna hang out with me in the snow? Yeah, I'd love to hang out with you in the snow. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm slopping this in there. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> we're just gonna pack this into a disc and then we're gonna get it cooled down and then all that fat's gonna coagulate and it's gonna turn, this is like the original protein bar. It's like the original cliff bar. All right, pop that on. There we go. Tina, now we're making the main course. I'm remembering that, I'm responding to it. I'm becoming more human. You are becoming more human. So we're making the main course right now. We are making kalo dal or black lentils. Uh -huh. This is part of like a set meal that is very popular in Nepal that is called dalbat, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, typically eaten almost every single day. You would have a vegetable curry. You would have the dal, which are these lentils right here. You mm -hmm. would have rice and a pickle with it. However, when they were traveling to the mountain, they would just take the dal and some chapatis, uh, which are like, a, you ever heard of a tortilla? Uh-uh. Yeah, that makes sense. You don't got any Taco Bell up here. But a chapati is really similar to a, to a tortilla. It is a flatbread uh, from you know South Asia. So we're gonna start by getting our kalo dal in this pressure cooker right here. It's gonna add some water to that. You like lentils? This is good. If you're trying to be more vegetarian, some more you know kind of human friendly. No, oh, god, that's dried. Oh god, those dried beans. Oh, those are they're gonna soak in your stomach. And you're, yeah, that's not. I, I respect the fact that you just put everything in your mouth. That's gross. There's Yeti spit on the counter. We're gonna add some ginger. And we're gonna add some ghee right there. And so we're just gonna pressure cook these and then we're gonna get all of our aromatics going in this pan right here. Did you enjoy those? It didn't taste like anything. Yeah, not yet. Humans do a thing called cooking. Cause you know how you just kind of like go into a raw frozen yak mm -hmm. that you find on the ground, you tear it through with your teeth? I don't eat yak. Sorry, yaks are your friends, I forgot. No, they're like family. They're like family, sorry. It's kind of like how you don't eat monkeys. It's true, I suppose. You suppose, I'm telling you. So we got this in the pressure cooker. We're gonna pressure cook that with garlic, ginger, salt, and that in there. We're gonna pressure cook this on high for about 20 minutes, then we're gonna get the rest of it going. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> this feels better that way. Dang. Can you open that pot up so the lentils should be cooked? How many times have you made me do this in different episodes? A lot, like too many. And has it ever gone well? Not really, but no, this should, this should be fine. It, it shouldn't have, the pressure should have released. There you go. The key is you need to be in Yeti costume. That's how we cook, baby. Yay! That's how we do it. <laughs> That's so All good. Right. 
So I ask you a question, how are they gonna make this stuff? The plan, well, well, I know you would pre-make it. it at base camp and they would have a bunch of porters. They would have teams, they literally had 10,000 pounds of luggage and supplies that went with them up this mountain. The team was like 400 people deep and only two people made it to the summit. Seems like such a bad idea to it, bring that All of this stuff. is a terrible idea, but they did it. And they actually consider it to be the three poles because the Brits had like a huge challenge to get to both the North Pole and the South Pole and then they considered Everest to be the third pole. Well, isn't Everest, it's not even like the, the tallest mountain. Isn't it? No, I think it's like the sixth. No, Cho O used the sixth tallest mountain. Everest is definitely the tallest mountain. It is the tallest mountain? Yeah, 100%. Boy, what that's you like, think like the number life? one thing I should have researched before doing this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, this is the important part that's going into the lentils. So this is what gives it the flavor, and this is what makes it very Nepali. So we have here this Mount Everest Himalayan Jimbu. Ooh. So Jimbu is this wild garlic-like herb that doesn't necessarily have a counterpart that we would know, but give it a huff. It's really, really fragrant. It's literally like a wild uh, garlic chive is what they would consider it. And so we're gonna get that toasting in this ghee right oh. here. And it's gonna get super, super fragrant. And we're gonna take a couple chilies, we're gonna break them open. We're just gonna add those to that. And then we're gonna get some uh, cumin seed going in there. Big hallmark of Nepali cooking and garlic. And we're just gonna let this sort of sweat right here, get nice and fragrant. And then we're gonna add the butter and all of this delicious flavoring into the dal right there. It's interesting to think that anything can grow up there. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's a super cold climate, uh, but I mean, there were, you know, a, a ton of spices and then a ton of wild herbs and stuff like that. I mean, it's just this very like big spring flavor. Got the garlic a little bit brown. We're gonna pop that into all our dal right there, into the lentils. We're gonna stir this around. We're gonna add a hefty spoonful of butter and some more jimbu mm. when we serve it, but. That smells so good. Oh, God, doesn't it? All right, so we got the call of doll done. We got all our feast done. We're ready to have our little picnic. Very nice. Where I can teach you more about human culture and give you some more facts about Tenzing Norgay. Do you know that Edmund Hillary was knighted, but Tenzing Norgay was only given an honorary distinction, although the largest mountain range on Pluto was named after him? Which is like the smallest planet, so it's really passive aggressive. Yeah, it kind of is. Tina. What's up? In your quest to become more human, I have prepared for you a full human picnic. This is a five wow. days worth of food on the mountain. So if like you see these, you can now bond with your new friends. Yeah, so take, okay, so take this dough ball, pinch some off. This is the sampa, this is that roasted barley flour that's now in like a delicious dough and you take that and you dip it in your tea. Dip in the yak butter tea, try it, it's good food. You're like a sloth with a baby Ruth right now. Do not call me a sloth. I won't call you a sloth, I'm sorry. I'm a very hard worker. This is like doughy and pleasant. I All like right. That roasted barley flavor. Hmm. Yeah, give it a tea a sip. I'm trying to stir the butter in a little bit. Woo! That tea is strong. <laughs> I gotta take these teeth out, man. <laughs> the teeth stay. I gotta take it out. Take them out, take them out. <laughs> Maybe just one side. <laughs> okay. I mean, what do you think about it? It kind of just like reminds me of eating cookie dough. Yeah, right? But it, it ain't got no sugar in it. <laughs> well, it kind of just like deep savory taste, especially with the tea, the pu'er tea. It's got this incredible, just like- I like the tea a lot. It's like a little bit salty, earthen and bitter. That's dank, I'd wake up to that. Wow. Right? Yeah. All right, now let's move on to like what would be like a midday snack. My fingers are too greasy from all the yak butter. Let's eat some of this pemmican. So this is all of that dehydrated beef mixed with the fat and the cranberries and the honey. Just I feel bad just putting this tooth there like that. <laughs> no, leave the tooth. Leave the, leave there's the enough tooth. human remains on Everest. The tooth there's is gonna a, blend there's in. There's a, a spit string that came off of it and I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you right. are disgusting and my friend. Try that. Yay. This is going to be uh, very fatty and rich, I presume. And a little bit sweet. I gotta just take him. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put it down. Ooh. Wow. The sweetness and the honey, it honestly tastes like a, it tastes like a freaking Cliff Bar. And you start chewing it and you go, oh, is that beef? It's a beef bar. Beef and berries. Beef and berries. Why does that go together? It, do, it just does. And again, this whole thing is so calorie dense, it just sustains you with all that fat and protein. Yep, I'm into that. I'm digging the Everest life. I could live up here. Yeah. But let's try the Kalo doll. Okay, so we got take, no utensils. No, you're supposed to actually eat it with your hands. So you take a chapati and you're gonna take it and kind of dip it and kind of use your thumb like a roti like kind of thing. Of going yeah, on. exactly. Roti literally just means bread. Oh. And so, like, chapati is like a form of roti. As soon as I eat this, I'll put the teeth back in and then I'll tell you what, what Tina thinks. Mmm. That's, that's just, really good. It's so freaking aromatic. Got the jimbo. The chilies, yeah. So, it's just a little bit of chilies in there. That's just excellent. And can you imagine, like, on a cold day, say you're a human and not acclimated to it, like Carl, say Carl's out there? I really love that. I'm obsessed. I'm taking this home. Yeah. What do you think about human food? Hang on. Hold, please. 
You're back. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you too, buddy. This is really great. Would I do it again? I don't know how I'd make it. I suppose the Yeti digestive system probably isn't uh, acclimated to this. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Yeah. You know, I mean, I hope that you meet your romantic partner up on the mount, you know? I'm getting a, getting a call. It's weird. I think it's for you. Do you want to, do you, do you want to take it? Uh, okay. Hi. Long time no see. Yeah, I'm hanging out with my new boyfriend now. Oh. No, 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 no. That's not what that's, that's not what this is? Well, okay, but just for the sake of yeah, this. No, I don't, I'd, rather, just I'd rather just not be, I'd rather just, okay. Yeah, that's right, I'm over you. Oh, you're coming over? No, tell, don't. You're don't, very don't, angry. Don't tell him to come over. You're gonna I beat up this. this man I just I met? Don't do that, no. Can you just, All right, can you just I'll see you in a bit. Can you just freaking stop? You just picked a fight with Bigfoot. What's wrong with you? No, you picked a fight with Bigfoot. I, okay, well, uh, I gotta get out of here pretty soon. Thank you so much for watching Mythical Kitchen. We got new videos out every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, a hot dogs and sandwich every Wednesday, every podcast. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, with pictures of your Mythical Edition, and hashtag Dreams Food. See you next time. Psych. Wait, you might need this. Psych! Yeah, it's been very nice getting to know you. I have a very special set of skills. Get as messy as you want in your own kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Tells. Available now at mythical.com.